At number 5. Alfred George Hines. Alfred George Hines was a British criminal who successfully broke out of three great security prisons while serving a 12-year jail sentence. First escape from Nottingham Prison in 1958. He manages to get through locked doors and 20-foot prison wall. He traveled all over Europe during his time of hiding and running, after 248 days of freedom, he was captured. He brings a court case against the authorities and finding a reason to be escorted to the law courts. He used this incident to make his next escape by having a padlock smuggled into him while at the law courts. Two guards escorted him to the toilet, when they removed his handcuffs, he bundled them into the cubicle and snapped the padlock. He run away into the crowd on Fleet Street, five hours later he was captured at the airport. Third and final prison escape from Chelmsford Prison less than a year later. In June 1, 1958, he escaped going to Ireland. He lived for two years as a used car dealer under the name William Herbert Bishop before his arrest after being stopped in an unregistered car. At number 4. Yoshi Shiratorai is greatest known for escaping from prison four times. Yoshi was initially suspected of murder and robbery and sent to Ayamora prison. Few years later, he found a short wire from a wooden bathing bucket he picked the lock of his handcuffs. Police recaptured him after three days and he was sentenced to life in prison. He was eventually transferred to Akita prison in 1942. He managed to escape in Akita prison by climbing walls of his cell to reach the air vent. He would climb up and down every night and vent to extricate himself. He was tired from all the running and hiding, he decided to go to the home of a police officer, from his previous prison in Ayamori. The officer handed him over to the authorities, and he promised to not ever place his trust into police officer ever again. Osha was moved to a Bashiri prison. This prison was kept for the worst kinds of criminals in Japan. Each morning, he would spit miso soup on the doorframe of his prison cell. The salts and moisture eventually corroded and weakened the doorframe. Dislocated his shoulders and squeezed himself out of the small space on the metal frame where the guards would slide in his food. Yoshi as he escaped his cell wearing nothing but his underwear. He was imprisoned in Sapporo prison, a specially made cell that was intended to prevent him from escaping through the air vent in the ceiling. He was assigned six armed guards, and he was under surveillance, 24 hours. In 1947, he made his final attempt for freedom by removing the bolts that held together with the cell's wooden floorboards. He used a bowl to dig his way out of prison. In 1948, after a year of freedom, he was offered a cigarette by a police officer. He was recaptured after admitting to a policeman that he was an escaped convict. The High Court of Sapporo decided to revoke the previous decision of the death penalty. Instead, he was given a final verdict of 20 years in prison and being released on parole in 1961. He passed away to a heart attack in 1979. At number 3. Moondine Joes was Western Australia's most famous bush ranger. His real name was Joseph Belitho Johns. He was the son of a Welsh blacksmith and was imprisoned in March 1849 for the theft of foodstuffs from the home of Richard Price in Pentwine Clydeck. He was granted a conditional pardon on March 10, 1855. On 1862, he was accused of stealing. He branded an unmarked horse without trying to find the owner and was imprisoned in 2DI. He then escaped by unscrewing the hinges from his cell door. 
When recaptured, he seems to have served the next three years without incident and was released on a ticket of leave on January 5, 1864. On March 29, 1865 he was convicted of shooting a steer and was sentenced to 10 years. Joe was adamant that he was innocent of this crime. Joe escaped. He was recaptured at Tutananing and was given a further 12-month sentence. After a petition to the governor in April 1866, Joe was awarded a four-year remission on his sentence. Obviously Joe was not impressed and attempted to escape in July. The result was a sentence of six months in chains. One week later he was off again. This time he was with other escapees, John James, Thomas Bug, and John Bassett. The group were on the run for seven weeks. He was captured once more at Bodalin Soak on the 29th of September. Joe was sent back to Fremantle where he was chained by the neck to a post in the prison yard as an example to other prisoners. George Hampton had a special cell constructed for Joe. It was escape proof and that if Joe managed to escape from such a strong cell he would be given him his freedom. Joe remained in the cell for only four months. Due to ill health he was allowed into the exercise yard where he was given stones to break. One of the most extraordinary escapes ever to occur at Fremantle Jail, he built the stones up against the wall so that a space behind was hidden from the guard, dug through the wall, left his clothes hanging near the wall giving the impression that he was still inside the prison. On March 7, 1867 Joe made his escape in his underwear and boots. This time his escape was more successful and he remained free for nearly two years. He was recaptured at Houghton's Wine Cellar on February 25, 1869. Joe had gone there for a drink to celebrate his two years of freedom. Joe broke into the cellar while the owner was away but was unlucky as when the owner returned he was accompanied by two policemen who were in the area on an unrelated matter. He returned to Fremantle where he continued for the next two years until he was once again given a ticket of leave in 1871. He returned to the coast and lived in Kelmscott where he gained a reputation for insanity being known as Old Mad Moon Dine Joe. He died in the Fremantle Lunatic Asylum on August 13, 1900. At Number 2 Jack Shepard was the 18th century's most notorious robber and thief. His spectacular escapes from various prisons, including two from Newgate, made him the most glamorous rogue in London in the weeks before his dramatic execution. He threw himself passionately into this shady underworld of drinking and whoring. His career as a carpenter suffered, and Shepard took to stealing in order to boost his income. His first recorded crime was for petty shoplifting in spring 1723. Bess Leone who was recognized and also arrested. They were sent together to New Prison in Clerkenwell and were locked in a cell known as the Newgate Ward. The next morning Shepard filed off his fetters, made a hole in the wall and removed an iron bar and a wooden bar from the window. Tying sheets and blankets together, the pair lowered themselves to the ground, Bess going first. They climbed over a 22-foot high wall to make their escape. In August 30, 1724, having been convicted of burglary, Jack Shepard found himself under sentence of death. In Newgate in those days there was a hatch with large iron spikes opening into a dark passage, which led to the condemned cell. Shepard filed away one of the spikes so that it would easily break off. In the evening two visitors, Bess Leon, and another prostitute, Mal Maggot, came to see him. They distracted the guard at the same time as he removed the spike, pushed his head and shoulders through the space and with the help of the two women he escaped again. Jack Shepard made his most famous escape, again from Newgate Prison, between the hours of 4 p.m. and 1 a.m. on October 15, 1724. He do well in slipping off his handcuffs and with a crooked nail, picked the padlock securing his chain to the floor. Forcing several locks, 
he scaled a wall and reached the roof of the prison. He used a blanket to slide down the roof and onto a neighboring roof. Climbing into the house, he escaped through the front door still wearing his leg irons. He convinced a passing shoemaker to remove the leg irons. Less than two weeks later, he was recaptured, too drunk to resist arrest. Shepard was convicted and sentenced to be hanged at Tyburn. They rushed forward as the trap door opened and pulled on his legs to ensure their hero in instant and less painful death. He was buried that night in the graveyard of St. Martin. At number 1. Jacques Messrin. The bank robber and kidnapper Jacques Messrin has to be one of the all-time greatest prison escapees. He enjoyed risk and danger. On the August 17, 1969, Messrin and his girlfriend Jean Schneider both escaped from Purse Prison in Quebec, Canada. He ripped the handle off an aluminium mug and sharpened it by rubbing it against the cement wall of his cell. Using this as a weapon he captured a prison warder, he steals the keys and locking them in the cell. He was fast recaptured by the Canadian authorities and sentenced to a total of 11 years in the maximum security wing of the St. Vincent de Paul prison in Laval, outside Montreal. On the August 21, 1972, Messrin led five others in an escape. They used a pair of pliers taken from the metal workshop to cut through the three fences. They crawled along the ground and they stopped two motorists on the nearest highway to take over the vehicles. On the March 8, 1973 Messrin was caught by the French police. Messrin was being taken to the highest security jail in France, the La Santé in Paris, from which no one had ever escaped. On the June 6, Messrin was taken for trial at the Palais de Justice in Compiègne. He demanded to go to the toilet and allowed to use the lawyer's toilets, where the gun was hidden behind a container. Stuffing the gun under his belt. He jumped forwards and grabbed the judge, holding him and points the gun using him as a human shield to his way out of the court. On the September 28 the police recapture him again. He was sent back to La Sante. Messrin perfected his escape from La Sante. At 10 a.m. on the May 8, Messrin and two other prisoners escaped by using a secret cache of weapons that had been smuggled into the prison for them by a corrupt prison guard. Using a rope and grappling iron that had also been smuggled in for them, the escapees climbed over the wall and let themselves down the other side, stopping a passing car to make their getaway. On November 2, 1979, as he was waiting at some traffic lights, his car was ambushed and surrounded by armed police. Messrin was shot over 20 times and died. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.